God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Just confess it with me and say, God has a plan for me. Whatever it is that I'm going through, God has a plan for me. Whatever it is that is about to happen, God has a plan for me. I can rest in the assurance that He has a plan for me. And following that plan, God has a command that will follow that plan because He needs to tell you how you're going to execute that plan. So we will use the command of the Lord that God gave to Elijah to pray through this morning. Amen. I've already read scriptures um, in the first Kings chapter 17 verse 1 to 5 and positioned it. So the first thing that is very clear is that Elijah was given a command in terms of a direction of where to go. You are listening to me this morning. Some of you have got questions. God, where are you taking me to? Because I, it seems a bit dark in my life. God, where are you taking me to? What is the purpose of my life? Reveal the plan. But once you have the plan, you need the execution instructions. Where exactly God is taking you to? So the Holy Spirit has confirmed that he's going to reposition some of you. Some of you will be relocated, not only spiritually, but God is going to answer the questions that you've been having, whether or not you should be repositioned physically as well. Because some of you have been restrained by the ground that you're on. So any ground that has been, in, uh, has, been has not been fertile enough or has not been producing fruits, God will relocate you to a point where you are implanted. You are planted on a fruitful ground. So that should be your prayer this morning where you know something has been saying inside of you. And something is resonating with already what I've said. That you are getting the confirmation that God is saying, yes, it is time to move. And some of you perhaps will get the, 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 the instruction that it might not be the place to move. And he gives you the instruction what you should be doing in the position that you are in. But what resonates with my spirit man this morning more than anything is that God is going to relocate some people in the spirit and God is going to relocate you in the physical. So the first thing that I want you to learn is that God, whenever he gives a command, he will give you a plan and he gives you an answer where to go. Type it on with me because I'm already declaring. Say, God, give me an answer where to go. Where do you want me to go? Everybody needs the direction. The same way we turn our GPSs when we enter our vehicles. So when God commands, the issue of location of your breakthrough is revealed. So when God gives you a command, you understand that the issue of um, where your, how your breakthrough is going to come about is resolved. So sometimes it's not about capacity. Sometimes it's not about your beauty. Sometimes it's not about your lack of intelligence. You might be in a place or you might be with somebody. You might be in a place with some people or something who do not appreciate who you are and what you have. And when people don't appreciate what you are carrying and when people don't appreciate who you are, when people cannot appreciate where you're going, when they cannot carry the fact that you're a destiny child, when people cannot carry the glory that you carry, when the people cannot carry the dreams that you have. I've always said that sometimes we believe that, you know, when our friends tell us they love us, they actually believe in us so much that they want to help us get to the destination. But child of God, you need to understand that in, in as much as your friend can tell you they love you, by the same token, you need to understand that yes, they do love you, but they always want to be better than you. And that is the reality. They want to be better than you. Even the person who's typing in the comment section right now, no matter how much they can tell you they love you, they want to be better than you. And it doesn't mean that you have to dump them necessarily. And that is just the human nature. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the confirmations already that somebody is already resonating with this word. Hallelujah. So it's not about capacity. It's not about your beauty. It's not about a lack of intelligence. 
but it could be that God wants to relocate you. Some of you need to be relocated out of the current relationships and associations that you're in. Verse 3 of the scripture that I, I, I just read, it says, go away from here. So that is the spiritual instruction that God is moving you from the position that you're in so that you can reach the point of your breakthrough. He says, turn eastward and then hide yourself by the brook of Cherith before Jordan. Some of you need to be hidden away. That is why sometimes it, you need to be careful who you're sharing your dreams with until God brings that manifestation of that breakthrough. You need to be hidden away so people don't get to see what, you do, what, what, what you're going through. You don't need a pity party. You need to be hidden away. And in that hiding place that God is going to put you in, He's going to provide for you. So what I want you to take home today by the end of this broadcast is that your supply and your needs will be met. Your supply is going to be provided. God had the audacity to go and provide for Elijah in the midst of the famine after he had pronounced that there was not going to be rain. There was not going to be rain. There was going to be an upcoming famine. But God was going to reposition Elijah to the point that he does not have to feel the effects of the famine. He was going to bring the provision that was going to elevate him. Hallelujah. Thank you to those who are sharing the live broadcast and those who are tapping on the screen. So he says in verse 3, leave and go across the Jordan River so you can hide there near the Cherith Creek. And I want to, I want it to be your prayer this morning and say, God, lead me to my brook of Cherith, that brook, that place that you want me to be hidden in. Let's look at the definition of the brook. Hallelujah. What is a brook? Where is this place that is a brook? Thank you, Jesus. So all good things that may be in your current location, hallelujah, that may be in your current location, maybe those good things could have been the things that are holding you back, hallelujah. For the sake of time, I want you to go and research the word called brook. It's a very narrow place, hallelujah. But God is able to expand in that other, in that same place. He's able to quench your thirst in that same place. Hallelujah. So, all good things, wherever you are currently, they may be holding you best back. Um, there was a scripture that I shared yesterday. Is that, you know, Paul says, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I don't look at the things that happened in the past because some of the things that hold us back are the things that have happened in the past. Some of them being negative, but also we should be cautious of the things that are positive that have happened. That we don't bask in the glory of past days. We don't bask in the, the, the achievements of the past. Because for every, every success, every promotion that God has taken you to, there is a next level and in the next level you're going to have to battle new demons you're going to have to battle new challenges hallelujah somebody so your prayer and your declaration this morning should be God loose me from, uh, loose me from those things good or bad that have held me back in the past loose me even from the good things that have happened in my past that may not necessarily be my best so what I'm saying is that there should be a transitioning from your good to the best. Yes, it was good, but there's always the best. So when God gives you a command to leave, some of you are stuck in, the, in, in, in abusive situations. Some of you have heard the cries that you are in a toxic environment. I never advise people to say leave without knowing where you're going. But the Holy Spirit will tell you and confirm whether you need to leave that toxic environment. And, 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 and your prayer and your outcry should be, God, not only do I want to leave this toxic environment, but open a new door that I can go in. Some of you are in toxic work relationships. And this thing is, is having such a bearing in your spirit and in your body physically that you literally feel sick when you have to go to work because of the toxic environment. But if you feel that you have exercised all the fight that is in you, you have done everything possible to fight and to rectify things and to, 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 to war in the spirit, to rectify that workplace environment, and you feel in your
your spirit that there's a strong push that you should leave. Then your next prayer should be, God, open the door so that I can continue to supply and continue to provide for my family and provide for myself. And you need to trust God that God is saying this is a good thing. Hallelujah. And as I pray for you, everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now, May God release you from every toxic relationship, every toxic environment that you are in and show you your brook of cherith where he's go, taking you to. Hallelujah. If you're just coming in, we are talking about when God commands. What is the instruction? What is the commandment that he, what is that command? Because we serve under the chief commander. Hallelujah. So anywhere or anything that you may have been addicted to, and that thing is killing you that thing is killing your dreams your prayer this morning should be God deliver me and that is my agreement and standpoint with you today I stand in the gap with you this morning I decree and I declare that God is going to deliver you from anything that is killing you any addiction that is killing you any toxic relationship that is killing you any abusive relationship physically, mentally, emotionally that is killing you and draining you. May God deliver you from that thing and take you to your brook of charity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, Lordy. Hallelujah. Deliver me, Lord. I want you to declare it. Deliver me from that toxic city. Deliver me from things that are killing me. Deliver me from environments that are killing me. Deliver me from relationships that are killing me. It's not worth it. It's not worth your mental sanity. Do you understand that certain breakthroughs cannot be unlocked? Certain doors cannot be opened? Certain gates cannot be lifted until you are released and you are delivered from that situation? I want you to trust God because sometimes we get stuck and we stay in abusive situations, in toxic situations, in the situations that are killing us because of codependency. We are dependent, we are afraid that we don't have the financial resources. I'm talking to that person who is stuck in a relationship and saying it's for the sake of my children but yet you know you are dying inside that yet you know that cancer is eating you inside because bitterness has been growing inside of you may God deliver you from that situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you to those who are tapping may God deliver you so whatever it is Lord, that you will use to move us out of the situation that we're in. Whatever the Lord will use to move you out of the stagnancy that you're in. Whatever you will use, God, to, to move us out of the, the, the toxic uh, people that are around us. By your prophetic word this morning, by the protocol prophetic word, the protocol breaking prophetic word that is coming forth this morning by the ideas that you're going to plant in our minds, by the ideas that will be translated and the creativity that will flow from us, oh God, whatever is that thing, you need to move me. And I ask you right now, Lord, unleash it right now. Unleash it. I'm ready to obey your commandment. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to execute that command. Unleash me. Receive the power to let go and leave whatever it is you need to let go of some of you have been stuck you don't want to let go let go there's something that i always tell when in, in in meetings especially when i'm with women that you don't need a person to tell you more than three times that they don't want you and sometimes we we we, we want to mask the fact that you are in a relationship or you are in association with somebody who is just not even tolerating you they've told you a million times that they don't want you but you don't want to move from that situation let me talk to those of the people that are in relationships maybe it's a, a you are even still single you are not even married to that person but they tell you in many ways that they're actually done and some people want it to be verbalized my mother always used to tell me don't wait for a man to tell you don't wait for a man to reject you the signs, the telltale signs are already there. The fact that he's not calling you or she's not calling you back, it's a sign. I always say there's nobody who's so busy 
that they don't have time for a call. If you have time to go to the bathroom to relieve yourself, you've got time for the other person. And I'm talking to those of you who are in relationships. You don't have to wait that long to be told that I'm rejecting you. When I left my job at, at a point when my, the values of my, my personal values were not aligning with what was happening in the environment that I was working in. I tried to resist it for almost a year. And I remember my medical doctor saying, if you stay in this job, it's going to kill you. And you need to choose whether you need your life because you cannot be in the hospital every month escaping the fact that you are depressed escaping the fact that these people want to make you to be something that you're not they want you to they want to make you to compromise the values that god has given you come on talk to me they want they they, they want you to start accepting bribes and you know that it, it doesn't align your spirit man is saying no Follow that gut instinct. That is the Holy Spirit talking to you. To say, I will not compromise my Christianity. One of the biggest fights you're going to have to fight as a Christian is that you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight a fight of, of compromise. Of being less. You're going to have to say, I'm not going to compromise. Sometimes we are the ones that hinder answers to our prayer because we compromise a lot. They, they, they laughed at church yesterday when I said to them, you cannot ask me to bless something that is a sin. You cannot ask me to bless a cohabitation relationship. God has not ordained it so. God will honor his word and he will honor what he has taught us, his laws and his principles. Talk to me, somebody. Thank you so much, those of you in Mara Vigil who are sharing. God bless you. So receive the power to let go and leave whatever situation that you are in that you have been holding and clinging on to and you know that this thing is killing you. You don't want to let go. Let go of that married man. Let go of that woman. It's not going to amount to anything productive. Let go of wrong behaviors, wrong personality traits. Those things will make you weak. And he blesses those who are mighty warriors. You are mighty warriors. God is going to bless your effort. God blesses your hustle. God blesses everything because you chose to fight for the right things. You chose to stand for the right things. Hallelujah. The Lord of hosts who is leading you. Whatever you will use God to move us from the place where it's keeping us stagnant. Where it's keeping us not moving. Father move us this morning. I declare and I decree that every chain, every spiritual chain, every physical chain that has been tying you to something that is negative. Something that is negative, that is tying you down, that is saying you are not going anywhere. I command that chain to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that thing to say, go away from here. Your prophetic word has come through this morning. It's saying, go away from here. That we saw in the scripture. Elijah was told, it's time to go away from here. Tag your neighbor and tell them, go away from here. Let's increase those likes and make sure that we are populating the kingdom of God. Go away from here. Whatever is holding you back that is negative, go away. There is a famine. You can see the famine. He has warned you of the famine that's coming. But he's saying there is a point of protection that I'm going to. If you can trust me that I am your provider, you don't have to necessarily stay in something that is going to kill you. Father, whatever I need to go away to, reveal that thing to me. Let that be your prayer right now and say, God, reveal to me where I need to go to. Reveal to me where I need to go through. That place, where, where, where is my brook of cherries? Where are you going to feed me there? You're going to make sure that I'm provided for. Some people have been too scared to leave. But when and they find out that once they left, they now found out the potential and the talents and the skills that were inside of them. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Whatever I need to go away, Lord, equip me with those things. Whatever the ideas are, equip me with those things. Whatever, wherever the capital is, God, equip me with those things. Whatever it needs to resonate inside of me to understand my why and where you're taking me to, Lord, show me that thing. 
and I trek with you when I go through the scriptures and I remember the example of Lot in the book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 15 the Bible says and when the dawn arose rose up the angels hurried Lot and saying rise up they went to Lot and say hurry up this is the time to move so I hear this I'm here this morning to say the same thing by the leading of the Holy Spirit I'm here to poke you and say to you hurry up it's time to go Lot was taken was told that take your wife and your two daughters who are here lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city I don't want you to die in the place that you are in the angel was saying I'm here to rescue you rise up and get out take your family take your belongings take everything that you need to take and get out of here tell your neighbor it's time to get out of this place oh Jesus verse 9 verse 16 of, of, of Genesis 19 says he continued to linger some of us we are lingering we keep on wanting we are so attract, attracted to the dysfunctionality we are attracted to the dysfunctional mountain we want to keep going around this mountain because we want to find excuses but no if he told you he told you I don't want you if that situation has told you I don't want you it doesn't want you some of you are in toxic relationships because you did not see the Lord's face uh, in terms of the workplace associations or business associations you were not supposed to go there in the first place you chose to disobey God it's equally the same when people are, are, are saying I don't know I, I I'm in this ministry but I, I'm so frustrated and I I I I, I the minute you start seeing the negativity that begins to overwhelm the blessing and the positivity of where you are it's time the Holy Spirit is saying interrogate discern now it's time to ask am I in the right place there is something there's a witness inside your spirit man that will tell you I'm not in the right place I'm not in the right ministry I'm not growing here I don't understand there is something stinking in the situation that I'm in there is something off in the place where I'm in you can feel that that is why I'm saying the Holy Spirit if you are truly a born-again child of God you don't stay around falsehood you don't stay around things whether it's ministry whether it's in business whether it's in a relationship uh, 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 whether uh, 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 an, an opposite sex relationship whether it's a business transaction that you know God gives you, the Holy Spirit gives you that gut feel before you even put your pen on the paper. When I, when I underwent prophetic training, I was told that if you have to ask yourself twice, even when you are buying, just it was a simple thing just to say, you are in a shop, you are hesitating, there are, there are those voices that I say to you, I'm not sure if I need this. Is this a want or a need? That's the first question. Why am I hesitating in buying this thing? Walk away. If it is meant for you, it will be still there. But often as women, we are so propelled. We, we, we love sales so much. You just want to buy it just because it's on sale. But you may not need it. And that's how many people have, have thank you, God bless you, everyone who's gifting. You have put yourself in this cage. We get into debt because we, we, we start uh, amassing things that don't have nothing to do with what we need. We keep on going for the ones. Jesus, ask yourself twice, Unister. Is this a want or is this a need? Can this wait? If, if, if you are unsettled in your spirit, whether you are sitting in front of that estate agent and they're telling you this is the best deal ever, the Holy Spirit would have told you, I, this house looks beautiful, but do I need to sign? It seems easy. They're telling me this is a loan. You've got 36 months to pay for it. But hang on. Do I have the capacity to service this loan? Or is it this another entrapment that is going to put me in debt? That my children are going to suffer because of this? It's very easy. They are looking for us. They are looking to give us those, those credits that we didn't even ask for. Let me continue. So Father, whatever you will command to us, O oh God, whatever warnings that you have given us, O oh God, in whatever area in our lives of oh God. We want to heed those warnings this morning. I'm not moving until, until you tell me that I must go. 
whatever you will command to warn and to move us, O oh God, until we heed it, use it, use that thing. It might be painful for us because some of us for to, to be uprooted from certain foundations, it will be painful. It will be discomforting because now suddenly you realize that you need to have, you need to start having responsibility. Some of you need to move out of your, your mother's house and your father's house. You need to defy fear and get to the point where you're going to be yourself, your own person. Where you're going to have to be having to, to, to be responsible. Hallelujah. Therefore, this morning, I command everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now. You will not remain in any expired location. Whatever the expired location that you're in right now, I command you to move. And that is the command of the Lord. You will not stay in that place until you expire. Somebody shouted again in the comment section. Command me, Lord. Command me, Lord. Issue a command. You, you, are, you are enlisted in the army of the Lord. And in the army of the Lord, we receive instruction. When the commander-in-chief says you move left, you move left. You don't ask why. You don't ask too many questions. And, 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 and I truly believe that the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you. You guys, have, you, you actually know, some of you, the instruction has already gone that you need to move. You don't stay in a situation where you are dying. Your spiritual growth is too important for you to stay where you are dying. If the Holy Spirit truly lives inside of you, you know when you are in the wrong place. And some of you, yes, I dare to say, you are in certain wrong ministries. And I'm not advertising my ministry, by the way. This is interdenominational. But I'm saying that check yourself. Why am I not growing? You have lingered too long. The angel said you have lingered too long. And he took him by the hand. He held his hand and he said, it's time to move. So when it's time to move, by your command, oh God, I will move. Somebody confess it and declare it. I will move. When it's time to move by your command, Lord, I will no longer linger. The curse of lingering that has been holding on to you too much. It's costing you too much. The cost of lingering around your past, despite the command this morning, I issue it right now. I decree and I declare that it's going to be broken right now. The thing that is making you to hold on too long and too much. That root cause, that root cause, that root curse, whatever, wherever it's coming from, that is not allowing you to obey the fresh command from God. This morning, I free you from that thing. I free you from that curse. I free you from that root that is saying you are not going to be able to move. Come on, somebody. Every attraction that you have to your past that will not allow you to move. This morning, I command the relocation of the Lord to come. By grace, you are being relocated. You are relocated to your new place of grace and favor. You are being relocated. God is going to kill and destroy anything that is in your past. Any words that are in your committees, in your brain that are trying to hold you back. Anybody who is trying to be negative. What is that thing that keeps on attracting you to your past? And that thing that keeps on pulling you to the back? That thing that does not want you to, re to relocate to your new place? There's a new place. There's a new location called favor. There's a new place called grace. God, we ask you to kill that thing. We, we ask you to destroy that thing that keeps on attracting us to our past. There's a saying in my culture that says, you, a, a dog that cannot return to its vomit. Any dog that returns to its vomit, you're not a dog. Yes, I'm just using this as an illustration to say, stop going back to the thing that killed you, that almost killed you. Some people return to baby mamas, baby daddies, hallelujah. And you know that thing was not working. Do you trust in the Lord's provision that God is going to give you something better? God is going to give you somebody better. So this morning we ask that, Lord, with your right hand of power and your command, move me. Somebody declare it in the comment section and say, move me. Move me, Lord. Move my family. Move my calling into the direction that you want me to go. Some of you have been too scared to step out in the ministry call that God has given you. You've been dilly dallying. You have every excuse under the sun. I don't have the money to start. It's not the money that's important. It's whether God is the one who called you. 
It's whether God is the one that sent you because when he sends you and he gives you that vision, he gives you provision for that vision. Talk to me, somebody. Lord, with your right hand right now, I declare for everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now, may the Lord move you. May the Lord move your family. May the Lord move your business. May the Lord move you in ministry. May the Lord move you towards answering the call of God that is on your life. Stop making excuses. Stop saying that pastors are poor. I don't want to be in the calling of the fivefold. Whatever it is, whether you, are, you, you know in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. You must trust in his provision. If you are truly believing that he's the one that gave you the vision, trust in his provision. He will provide for you. Step out in faith. That spirit of yesterday that has been re re celebrating your past glory and making you to ignore the command of the Lord. Right now, I want you to pray and say, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from that thing. Whatever that thing is that has been happening in my yesterday, whatever has been happening in my yesterday that keeps on celebrating the past glory, the things that I've achieved. Yes, you got that, the certificate. You got everything, the degrees and everything and everything else. But there's a next dimension. There's a next level. For every new level, there's new demons that you're going to have to fight. So you're going to have to always have the, 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 the weapons of your warfare that are going to help you fight to go to the next level. I decree and I declare right now that every divine command killer will be terminated from your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those of you on Facebook and on YouTube as well, may it be terminated in Jesus mighty name. That thing that is a command killer from God. Today we are aligning ourselves with the commandments of God, whether they are convenient, whether they are comfortable for us in Jesus mighty name. And this is God showing his mercy. He's been merciful enough to bring this word. Whether you look at it from the position of a said, it's a word of rebuke or it's a word of alignment to say, there is a command that I have given. And when you follow the command, you are saved. When you follow the command, you get into the ark. You and your family are saved. You take everybody that you need to take with you. You come out. The angel has actually come this morning to give you that divine visitation to say, I'm going to hold you by your hand and I'm going to take you out into the city that I will show you. I'm going to take you out of this city because this is not working. This is not your life. I need to project you somewhere else. I need you to exit. This is your portal to exit this morning. Jehovah, you are merciful. Let your mercy speak for me. Let your mercy move me out in any city that is not fruitful for me. Talk to me, somebody. Whatever it will take before this year expires, before this month expires, before the rest of the half of the year expires, whatever it will take, tell your neighbor whatever it will take. Command your mercy to relocate me. Whatever it will take, oh God, we pray, Lord, that you command your mercy to relocate us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in every area that men have failed me. Command divine mercy to lift me and my destiny. Men have failed you. Women have failed you. People have failed you around you. Bosses have failed you. By the mercies of the living God, you are going to be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your destiny shall be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Despite the rejection, despite the heartbreak, despite the disappointment, despite the deals not going through, despite those who betrayed you and stabbed you on the back, you are being lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, because of your mercy, release a command in my way. Activate a command into my life. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody pray along with me and preach along with me this morning. Talk to me. Lord, I ask you by your mercy, release a command. Somebody say it in that comment section. Release a command, Lord. Release that command. Activate a command in me. Activate a command in my life. I need an instruction. I'm a soldier. Give me an instruction. Give me a command. The angel says he brought him forth. We are in 1 Kings chapter 17. Those of you who joined us late, we are getting commands from the Lord and we are moving by the command of the Lord.
I don't care what I'm going through right now, but by your command, I will emerge victorious. I know that I'm going to emerge victorious. I may have toiled all night and I may not caught any fish, but when the master comes in with his command, he says, launch out into the deep. I will continue to cast my nets and I will experience net breaking blessings because the fish that I'm going to catch is going to be overflowing. I need to relocate by your command. If it is the relocation of my business, maybe I chose the wrong zone to plant my business. Relocate me to a position where customers will now begin to come in. Lord, relocate my strategy. Relocate my business plan. Maybe my business plan is not working. Relocate my personal life plan. Relocate whatever mindset that I need to break out of relocate the way I'm managing my finances, relocate the way I am managing my family so that I can be, uh, see the fruits of my labor and see them being fruitful. Oh, somebody say I'm moving to a fruitful ground. I'm moving to a fruitful ground. Oh, Jesus. Father, I command, Rispa, you will arrive safely at the brook of Cherith. Somebody say, take me to the brook of Cherith, my brook of Cherith. Lord, I'm ready to go to that place. Take me to that place. The Bible says they set him outside of the city. So the spirit is confirming that he is setting you up. He cannot just move you from one place, but wherever he's moving you to, he's going to set you up. There is an arrangement of systems. He's going to relocate you. He's going to rewire you. He's going to provide new software. He's going to provide a new operating system. He's wiping out the old operating system in its totality. Move me, God. By your command, I'm moving, Lord. I command that this latter part of the year that is remaining, and this by the end of this year, the Lord is going to relocate you out of all forms of misery and pain. The things that you have been going through. Listen, you need to understand that there is a purpose to your pain. And you need to learn and experience exactly what God wants to show you in that season of pain, in that season of sorrow that you went through. There is a point where you are coming out of that point. And when he relocates you to a new season outside that pain, outside that sorrow, you begin to see fruit. You begin to experience joy. Miracles are suddenly attracted to you. Because now you are moving in the goodness and mercy of the Lord. Now you are moving in the alignment and the perfect will of God. That should be your desire as a saint and a Christian. Verse 17, he says, they brought them out. One said, escape for your life. Do not look back. Escape for your life. Do not look back. I'm talking to some people right now. Do not look back. Stop looking back. Stop returning to the vomit. What you vomited because the Lord knew. If it, Vomit is something that comes out because it's saying in your belly right now. I don't need this. This is your bodily organs telling you that I'm excreting the toxins out. I don't need this. The reason why you are crying is saying I don't need this. I'm excreting. I'm taking out the poison that is inside of me. I don't need this. Stop returning to the same poison that has been killing you. My God, I don't want to decode too much, but by that saying alone, some of you, you are sitting in poison. You keep on ingesting poison every single day because you do not trust the Lord. Take me to my brook of cherries. Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anyway. Do not stop. Don't look back until you get to your brook of cherries. Escape to the hills if you need to lest you be swept away some of you need to escape from where you are go directly to the hills to the mountain top so that you are untouchable so that the things that keep on wanting to come back into your life that keep on wanting to drag you back to the person you were you need to escape from certain types of friends that keep on killing you the, the moment you align yourself with this word is the moment where, 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 where God heals you completely Jesus it's time to escape. Tell your neighbor, it's time to escape. I'm going to my brook of cherries. Lord, please give us the conviction to trust you. Let us be convicted enough to trust you and to trust in your word. We are people of faith. The just shall live by faith. 
give me the conviction to believe in your word and not to doubt my Christianity. One of the biggest fights that you're going to have to fight is the fight for your faith, the fight for your Christianity, the audacity to believe in your faith, the audacity to fight for your faith, not to be embarrassed the fact that you are a born again child of God. Some of us want to be wishy-washy when we are around people. We don't want to acknowledge that we are born again children of God. We want to be fitting in into the environment. We want to fit in and play around with the devil you are messing around with them because you feel like if they, if they will say you are too religious no you are not too religious you're just you are a spirit being in 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 concert and in in in, in, in cohesion with your master jesus talk to me in every of your life that you are in danger and you don't know about it father i command an escape for them right now in Jesus mighty name some of them are in dangerous situation that are threatening to, to to kill them but they don't realize it because it's like a wool has been pu uh, pulled over their eyes it's like witchcraft has been pulled over you right now I command an escape for you somebody say I receive my command of escape as the Lord lives, I declare and I decree that you will not be swept away in the flood of pain, in the flood of regret. You will not regret. You will not be swept away by any wind of doctrine. You will not be swept away by every current that is coming, every storm. Why must you be shaken by every storm that you go back to the world and don't, and, and don't hold on to your God? Hold on to the boat walk on that water walk through that storm and get to the point where you are in the boat and jesus is securing you verse 3 says go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook of cherith god hide me let it be your declaration this morning and your prayer god hide me in the shadow of your wings hide me protect me from all the vultures that want to devour me that location where my solution is lord command me to get it to get there show me the location that is for my protection show me the brook that is holding my solution show me the person that i actually need to be fraternizing with that will be the answer to my solution show me to my destiny helper some of you have not been breaking through because you keep on shutting yourself inside in a cocoon and you don't know that you need to put yourself out there. Take that risk and expose yourself to different people. Network with other people that will help expand you. That will help increase something that inside of you that shows you that there is more, there is always bigger. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as I pray for everybody who is at the sound of my voice, in every area of their life where they are stranded, oh God, they feel like they are stranded, they feel stuck, oh Lord, I command freedom for them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you are loosed, you are free. From now on, the Lord will command everything and every event around you and point you to where you need to go and point you to where you need to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every location that has been causing you to be in a state of retrogression, always pulling back. You take one step forward and it's like you have been taken 10 steps back. Right now, I speak to that situation of retrogression. I command it to lose you by the name of Jesus Christ. I command that the Lord shall show you exactly that brook of cherith where you need to go to in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray with me this morning and say, my brook of cherith, by divine command, I will arrive this season. Tag your neighbor and tell them, I will arrive this season. God bless those who are sharing the live broadcast. Share to at least seven people. Somebody needs to hear this. Command Give, give me a command that will show me my brook of cherries. I will arrive in this season. This is my season for arrival. This is my turn. This is my time. God uses three ways to intervene and to command using any of, of, of the three principles. What are the three principles that the Lord is going to use you to, to, to intervene and to show you his command? Number one, he's going to tell you where to go. Number two, he's going to tell you who to meet. Number three, he's going to tell you what to do. Do you understand that when, when, when you are now following these three principles, where am I going? Who am I going to meet? What am I going to do? That is all that you need to do or, or know. That is the instruction and the command that you need to do. 
where am I going? I need you to ask that question. Ask yourself, where am I going? Who am I meeting? What am I going to do when I get there? The Lord says, leave this place. Where am I going, God? The brook of Cherith. Who am I going to meet? I'm going to meet the ravens that are going to feed me. What am I to do? Remain hidden there until I give you the next instruction. Hallelujah. Who does God command? Who does God command? God can use anything. And God can use anyone. He can even use things that are not humans. That is why I'm saying that He can command the ravens to feed you. These are bears which were eating meat. You need the meat. There is a famine. There is no food around you. La Korea Basunda Kalia. Scarlet, what you do need is to know who and where you're going. Who are you going to meet? And what are you going to need to do there? That is the answer to your prayer. And it shall be when you drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So your thirst will be quenched. You will have more than enough in that brook, in that small creek. You are going to have what you need. The ravens will come and feed you. You don't even have to go out there and feed yourself. But I'm going to command the ravens to bring the meat and feed you there. I'm not bringing somebody to feed you. I'm sending the birds to come and feed you. Whoever God you have ordained to help me. Before this week expires. Let them find me. Come on pray along with me and say let them find me. Before the end of this week. Before the end of this month. Before the end of this year. Lord who have you commanded to come and feed me. Let those people come and feed me. Let my destiny helpers locate me and come and help me. The power to recognize the new opportunities that God is bringing your way. Let them be open. Let them be shown to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as we declare, we decree together in that comment section. Father, we declare that we will recognize every opportunity you are sending our way in the name of Jesus Christ. For the sake of our well-being. Father, give us an irreversible command. For the sake of my well-being. Lord, if they will not pray it, I will pray it. Lord, for the sake of my health, for the sake of my sanity, give me an irreversible command that will move me to the next dimension. Secondly, who does God use? Who does God command? God will command the ravens and the ravens will not argue with the command of God. So the person or whether the thing that God is sending your way will not argue with God and they will execute what they need to execute in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. When God commands there is no resistance the disciples or, or whether it is a, a, a destiny helper whether it is a raven it's not going to enter into a debate and say God I don't want to go and help this person the fish did the fish was commanded and it went and swallowed up Jonah there was no debate go and reposition Jonah to where exactly he needs to go through because he's about to miss it so those of you who are about to miss your step God is saying I'm repositioning you I'm relocating you. Whether I need to send a fish, whether I need to send a bed, I'm recollect, re, re, relocating you. By this altar of protocol breaking prayers, God is saying, I'm relocating you. You cannot leave from this broadcast thinking that I did not hear the word of the Lord. You have heard the truth. And if you choose to go back to the vomit, you are the one responsible that is going to be holding yourself and making yourself stagnant. My Jesus. Let me not be stuck for the sake of my children. Let me not be to one day find myself dead that my parents will cry because I got stuck in the wrong relationship. That I was obsessed by the fact that I wanted to be married at all costs. By the fact that I did not know there was more that God has put inside of me. Let me not get stuck in that type of scenario. That I felt so desperate and I didn't trust in the provision of the Lord. The Lord will even use the most impossible of places and command help to come to you there. The Lord will even use an, a family member that you do not even think that has the capacity to use you. He will use your enemies to help you. Anyone, oh God, let this be your prayer right now. Say with me, anyone you have commanded to make life easy for me. Lord, they will comply with that instruction. They will comply with that command. 
before the end of this year, whoever the Lord has commanded to make life easy for you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, before the end of this year, before the end of this week, before the end of this month, right now, for every contention, Lord, for every opposition, Lord, against our destinies, against our futures, Lord, we command divine favor to swallow them up. Anything that has been threatening you, as anything that has been saying it will contend with us, anything that has been saying it will oppose us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we command divine favor to swallow those things up. Father, we move with the with with the dimension and the dispensation and the beat of uh, of great favor. We move with the command of favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as we move with that command, Father, we declare, we decree that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. And every tongue that seeks to rise itself in the judgment, hallelujah, we will condemn and Lord, we condemn every tongue that has arisen against us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we move with the heritage that is the heritage of the saints of God, the heritage of the servants of the Lord. We declare we are the righteousness of the Lord. And Lord, we know and we appropriate that nothing shall by in any means harm us. There is no weapon of God because that weapon has been wielded by you, O God. And therefore that weapon will just bounce on us, O God. Whatever wizardry, whatever witchcraft has been sent us out to, to, to our direction, O God, we are going to survive it by the command of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Every seasonal opposition, every argument against your progress, against your plans, I command them to be destroyed right now. Every seasonal opposition, every seasonal argument that is against your progress and your plans, I command it right now to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every argument, every dispute against your finances, I command them to bow down in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has been saying that your finances shall be arrested, any disputes, arguments that have been saying, no, 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 no. The command of the Lord is saying right now they will bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Your, 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 your finances are being realigned in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord says in Exodus, he says, these Egyptians you will see no more. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his horsemen, and his entire army they had overtaken and encamped at the sea in front of Balsivon and when Pharaoh was drawing near the people of Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld they saw the Egyptians were marching towards them they were marching after them and they began to fear I speak to that fear this morning I command that you will not fear in the name of Jesus Christ and the people of Israel began to cry out. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody needs to tell themselves this morning, I will not fear. I choose to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will work for you today. He's going to work it out today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will not see anymore. I don't know what has been chasing you. But that thing you will not see anymore as you stand in agreement with me today in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father, I thank you. Every Pharaoh that has refused to back off me, every Pharaoh that has been refusing to back off me spiritually or physically, right now, the Lord is going to drown them. The Lord is drowning every sense of misery. Every Pharaoh will be drowned in that misery. In Jesus' mighty name, that misery that they were orchestrating for you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every meeting, every agreement that is being held day or night, wherever they are congregated, Lord, they did not gather by me. I did not call that meeting. Therefore, I speak to that meeting. I speak to that arrangement that is being held to bring me down. Make, make their lives unbearable, oh God. I command those meetings to be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, those who have gifted as well. Number three, understand that ravens are smart animals. They can't speak, but they can be commanded. They can't speak, but they can be commanded. Whether by eagles that he will feed you, whether by, I don't know, whether by, I don't know what animal he will choose to use, whether he will choose to use a raven. My God. My God. Let them locate me. I learned something about ravens that they are smart animals but they can be commanded 
they recognize and they are able to remember faces. If a raven knows another raven is watching it, it can hide its food and pretend as if that it was not dealing with its food. It can hide its food in one place while really hiding it in another place. So Father, I command in the name of Jesus Christ, let the best brains come out to help us. Those of you who are in business, surround yourself with the best brains. Stop being threatened about people. Hire the best people. One of the, uh, the, the best things that I, I, I heard, um, I forget the preacher's name now, but he's got a big massive church in the States. It's, it's holding in a state stadium. I don't know, somebody can, can, can help me recall the name. And he once said, he said, in his ministry, he has surrounded, he surrounded himself with the best brains ever. He has surrounded himself with people who are very intelligent because he knows that he's not an expert marketer. He does he needs a COO, he needs a CFO, he's running a big organization. He needs this machine to be well oiled and run smoothly. But some people who are bosses, they don't want people who are smarter than them. You need to understand that when you are part of a team and you are leading a team, you are a leader. You need the best brains around you because it's the best brains that are going to make you shine. If you are a business owner, you need the best brains that are going to make you shine. You might be the one who's the vision carrier. You might be the one that, that is having the capital to start that business. But you might not have the capability and the talents to run those things smoothly. That is why as a leader, as a servant leader, you always acknowledge the people that are working for you. You understand that they bring value. You understand that even when you, you, you embark on a recruitment, you are hiring people, you must hire the best brains. Stop competing with the people that you are hiring. I'm talking to business owners now. Stop being threatened that they may have more qualifications than you. You need those best brains. You need them to help reposition you. So those of you who are in support structures, in corporations, wherever you might be working, understand that God might not have made you the CEO of that organization. The CEO might have the strategy and the skills and the talents necessary to hold that and, 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 and to conduct that orchestra of everybody. Understand that you are valuable in the corner that you have been placed in, in the department that you have been placed in. You are adding value to the overall picture. You are adding value to the top and the bottom line of that organization's finances. Without you, that organization will not be able to stand. Whether you are a cleaner, you are important. Everybody, every member of every of our bodies in the church, in the body of Christ, do you understand that when the ushers are not there, you cannot expect the preacher to be preaching and ushering at the same time. So I'm daring you, those of you who know that you should be in the service of the Lord, step up. Understand that you are valuable in whatever place that God has called you. You work that position until your promotion comes. Thank you, Jesus. As the Lord lives, from now on, your face, your seed, your fingerprint will become known. You will become renowned for greatness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray with me and say, Lord, command the best brains to help me now. Command the best to move my way. Every clue that has been hidden for my breakthrough, I command the release of that clue. I command the release of that revelation that I need to move to my next level. God will use ravens. Ravens will have to work together to achieve this objective with you. They will have to work together with you to achieve whatever objective, to achieve whatever goal that God has set for you. I command hands to join hands to help you. Whoever your helper is, maybe it is somebody in, even in this broadcast, I want you to tag them and pray for each other and say, I command the hands that you need to join up with you and help you. I command the legs to join with other legs to fill in every missing gap in your life. 
whatever the legs, whatever the army that you need recruitment in, we are joining with you. We are standing in the gap with you. We are interceding for you. We are moving forward. We are moving in one accord, one step after the other. We command the forces to join and fight for us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are enlisted in the commanding forces of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of hosts is our leader. He's our commander in chief in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command every form of resources that you require to join resources with your the current resources that you have. You may not have enough to start that business, but I command whoever is holding the other part of the of, 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 of that part of the, that capital, they are finding you right now. They are relocating you. They are relocating themselves to you right now. Every missing piece of the puzzle is coming together. They are coming to meet your needs in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Animals that are ravens, they can show empathy. Father, send me ravens that will show me empathy in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the one that is likely to reject my request for help, I command them to show mercy. Let them show me mercy. Even if that person wanted to hate me, even if that person wanted to reject me, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may mercy speak for me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, I pray that everybody who's at the sound of my voice, wherever their efforts have failed i command mercy to speak for them in the mighty name of jesus christ god bless you mom sophie i command miracles to come into your life that no man can withdraw when mankind and in their ordinary in their flesh and carnal sense can give you a favor and they can bring you something they can withdraw it but the lord shall not withdraw it because he says my gift are without repentance the gifts that I give you are without repentance. They are not dependent. I'm not bribing you. I've got no conditions. When I release it, it's time for it to be released. God can command people who actually don't even have the capacity to help you. Do you understand that when Elijah, after this whole season, when he was commanded now to move from the brook of Cherith, he was commanded to go and meet the widow of Zarephath. And at the widow of Zarephath, he said, ask that 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 widow to feed you and the widow said i don't have the capacity i don't have the money to help you men of god i don't have enough food all i have is just a small barley of wheat i have a little bit of water and my plan was that i was going to bake this bread and i was going to eat it with my my child and that was going to be adequate and after this we were getting ready to die and elijah says no 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 take that very same wheat take that same water bake bread for me let me be the one who eats this bread and you will see you will never lack anything and the bible says after this whole season and after she had done as was commanded as was commanded after she did as she was commanded there was plenty enough there was not there was nothing lacking he had more food she had more food so sometimes god will bring you to that place and you meet somebody you even feeling sorry and saying you are not in a position to help me my god a friend of mine shared with me a story. He says, I was in the parking lot and I realized that I didn't have money to come out of the parking lot. It was a car guard that came to give me money to go pay for my ticket. So sometimes we look down on people that are around us. We say, what can a car guard do? I have another testimony. Somebody also on this broadcast says, I, I left home. I did not have my bank card with me. I didn't know how I was going to get to the office and suddenly my fuel tank went on empty and the car and the person who pours petrol after having poured full tank he said my sister you can go you can bring the money to me later and she said do you trust me enough she says yes I do go I will pay for this you can come and pay later so God can use people that you think they don't have capacity God can use a person who's a domestic worker. Have you not seen, you know, sometimes I always say, if anybody says I am not without anything, yet you are earning, let me give this illustration. You have an income of 10,000 rands a month, yet there's somebody who's earning 2,000 rand, but they have been able to build their house. You need to ask yourself and ask the right questions. How did they do it? How did they earn so much? They end little. Domestic worker. I have seen mansions built by domestic, domestic workers. Yet I see people who are earning 20,000 rents net. Or 20,000 US dollars, whatever it is in your currency. 
they don't have a car you have a car but you are not able you are still staying in the back room but yet somebody has got a whole big house how did they do it we need to ask the right question so that wisdom can start to be activated in us am i communicating to somebody this morning thank you for those who are tapping mara official is on fire talk to me talk to me fortune and online my god the widow was in a hopeless situation so if if you are that tool if you are that destiny helper and somebody has asked you for help i know it's tempting to say if i give out my last cent pastor what will i eat don't worry about that i have given in my last knowing very well that my family was not going to be without bread on that day there was a day that i was leaving church and it was so tough because i knew there was no food in the house but we had only one loaf of bread and as we were leaving for church my husband said bring that loaf of bread i said where is it going she says you never know who we meet in church who needs that bread and it didn't make sense for me i was like this is the bread that is supposed to push us most in the next few days and he says bring that bread and for god as god is set we had to give out that bread all i know is that god provided the supply was there more than enough hallelujah hallelujah i have given people would give an offering and there might have been needs but i will still give because i adhere to what the spirit of god says and and make no mistake let me teach this properly ministers of the gospel the resources that are meant for church these are resources that are meant for church this was once in an ad hoc fashion right um we had this discussion with one pastor friend of mine who said the tithe has a specific use in the church and it needs to be used for the right thing but human beings or most christians think that the tithe is to be used for other things but no is that so that there should be meat in the storehouse of the lord so that the levites are provided for you can't now start using the tithe for something else for for projects whatever the project may be that's not the subject of my message or my focus but i want to tell you cuz i want to train you i want to train you so that you become more stronger and have direction to support your pastors to support you you understand things better so that you can defend the faith i said one of the fights yesterday as i was teaching on the fighting spirit that one of the fights that you're going to have to fight is the fight to defend your faith the fight to defend your christianity they may not understand the principles and the policies within which your 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 faith operates or the organization that you might find yourself in we follow instruction we follow commands hallelujah somebody thank you for those who are following as well god bless you welcome to the family hallelujah so the lord will command even whatever is left whatever it is that is left is a seed whatever is in your hands and you are saying god i don't have anything you have your hands this is your seed my hands are not meant only for war but this is a seed i'm holding a seed when somebody says i'm jobless let me tell you guys i don't know how many people have lost count how many billions of people are on this planet earth everybody wants a better future even if we take half the billion of those people there's not enough jobs for all of them and some of you the lord is provoking you and you know you need to step outside of the box and start thinking business you need to start thinking entrepreneurship and stop being stuck and being and frustrating yourself with applications for C sending out CVs you are meant to have been an employer from long since some of you were supposed to have started your businesses but because you don't see that the tools and the assets some of these things your potentials are the ones that are supposed to unlock these businesses I was invited to a presentation and somebody gave me an offer and said please can you help me manage this part of my business I need to help people people who don't have you lost your job you have a car do you know that that car is a tool before the bank can even try to repossess it that car is a tool that you can use how can you use it 
You have people who have jobs who are saying, my salary does not meet up, but what I do know is that I can bake and I can sell those baked goodies and things that start balancing. So whatever you have left, I command that thing to live. Whatever you have left and you thought it is a dying thing, that thing is not dying. Some of you, your gifts, you, you, you use your mouth for the right things. I realized long ago as a child I started teaching I was teaching children in the neighborhood I did not know that the Lord was preparing me to be a teacher of the word to be a preacher of the word I progressed in life I used my mouth even when I chose my profession I wanted to defend those who who, who, who are not uh, um, God bless you Matthews I wanted to defend those who couldn't defend for themselves. That is why I went into the legal profession. I said, God, there are people who are suffering. I began to use my mouth. So when people would say, hey, you talk a lot. I said, that is exactly my, that is my strong point. I speak. I speak. I use what is inside of me. Every tool, every skill, every gift. They are working in unison. There is no way you can be around me and not flourish. That is a lie. I can tell you for sure. It's not being boastful. With all humility, I know that God called me to resurrect things that are dead. Everything, it comes alive. I've resurrected business after business. Hallelujah. As young as I was, when I started pastoring, I asked myself, sometimes I would ask myself and say, where did I get the wisdom? I was not even married, but I would cancel people who are married because the anointing was speaking. And the, and the anointing is a reward of a fighter. It is a reward of those who are enlisted in the camp, in the armies of, of the living God. I had the anointing. I had the wisdom operating in me as a young girl to give direction to elderly people and the things would work out can only be by the grace of God. Even where you are at, your prayer this morning, God, command help to find me. I command that those things, your dreams shall live and they will not die. That thing that was dying, it will have life in Jesus' mighty name. God can command abundance and lack to stop. For thus says the Lord of God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent. It shall not run out. The jar of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So until the provision comes from the angle that you were thinking, God will make sure that he provides for you in that hidden brook of cherub. Somebody say it in the comment section and say, I will live by the command of the Lord. I will command me. Command me, Lord. Give me a command. I declare and I decree that before the end of this month, every hopelessness shall be turned into hope in your life by the end of this month i command that every lack of options will stop in the name of jesus christ i command the lack of ideas to stop in the name of jesus christ i command that you will receive the direction every form of lack of direction I command it to stop in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as I pray for these ones that have uh, joined this morning, as, as we close, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we stand in agreement with your promises, Lord, that you are our maker. We ask, oh God, that you come concerning everything and everybody who's around us, concerning the works of our hands, that issue a command, issue a command, oh God, my God, it shall come to us to pass that before they ask, I will answer. Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The Lord knows exactly what is tormenting you, what is in your heart. In the midst of the street and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded its fruits every week every week every month your tree shall yield fruits in the mighty name of jesus christ you are being commanded this morning oh my god time is fast spent you are commanded to exercise the authority over whatever thing that god has put in charge of you you must exercise authority commanded in the comment section there and say i have authority 
in every organization there's a hierarchy there's a managerial structure that gives direction to the one who is lower and it gives direction father show me give me direction I'm in your kingdom and I know that there are protocols to follow and I know that you can suspend the protocols of God as you give me direction and you elevate me to the position where I need to be hallelujah you have the full scale authority that you need every child of God has a glorious and, 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 and enviable destiny you have a destiny that says you will shine brighter you must shine brighter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every one of your destinies it will unfold daily weekly and monthly in this rest of the past part of this year in your destiny shall unfold and your destiny shall shine in the mighty name of jesus christ you have been given the authority to command the week and as we command this week as we close in the mighty name of jesus christ father i release the authority let the audacity that is inside of them begin to be released right now in the name of jesus christ father as we command this week we command this week to yield to our expectations we say oh god our expectations shall not be cut off in the mighty name of jesus christ we will command as we are instructed we will be instructed as we issue out the commands of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we take responsibility to actualize the fruits that you have put inside of us. Father, we take responsibility that we are connected to the vine and as we are connected to the vine, our leaves shall be evergreen and our leaves shall produce fruit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are commanding oh God, we decree and we declare that we are able to stand in the place of responsibility and we are taking charge of this week, Father God. We command oh God as we are saying oh God and we declare and we decree Lord that we are sitting on the head of the devil and we are in charge we are in charge father god nothing shall by any means harm us in the might in mighty name of jesus christ so so god as we issue every bold declaration we accompany it by faith in the name of jesus christ and we decree and we declare that our heart will show forth and our rise that we have in redemption shall be manifested in the name of jesus christ the bible says let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy in the name of jesus christ father we have come to the throne of grace uh, to, to obtain mercy and grace uh, that will dislodge the devil from anything that we are doing. Father God, uh, we are obtaining the grace, uh, oh God, uh, to dislodge uh, anything that the devil knows that it will point us in the right direction, in the right direction, anything that will point us to the fact that uh, we are going to redeem everything that the enemy has stolen from us, oh God. You have paid the price of redemption on the cross, oh God, and therefore for everything that your blood speaks for, Father God, it shall be manifested in the name of jesus christ as we open our mouth oh god everybody who's at the sound of my voice lord fill our mouths with whatever we need to say in the mighty name of jesus christ oh my god mighty jesus open up your mouth you are a believer open up your mouth the holy ghost will fill it you cannot remain silent in everything that is around you every kind word that you need to fulfill this week it is coming to pass in the mighty name of jesus christ remember a closed mouth is a closed destiny in the name of jesus christ therefore father god i stand in agreement with them i declare and i decree that before they call lord you have answered them lord we thank you for the assurance of faith oh god that you have given us god in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, all, all that we need to do to decrease so that you may increase in us, oh God. Father, cause it to happen. Issue a command. Issue a command in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in this broadcast, Father God, you have equipped and empowered believers, oh God, that will receive their authority, oh God. They will exercise their authority command what you want to see in this week right now in the comment section i don't know what you are believing for god for this this morning right now begin to command that thing begin to call out those things that you are commanding this week in jesus mighty name and as you command the words will go forth for you in this week in jesus mighty name as you command the the, the, the words will come for go forth and they will bring you the fruit that you require they will bring you the benefits that you require so much so that there will not be enough room and house to contain it in the mighty name of jesus christ whatever the blessing state your blessing father i command into this week i command my health i command high blood pressure to live in the mighty name of jesus christ father i command provision for groceries for my children in abundance in the mighty name of jesus christ there is no prayer that is too minuscule anything that you are believing him for right now i command every migraine to grow go away in the name of jesus christ 
I speak grace and life into your new week. I speak fruitfulness into your new week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you continue to pray right now, right now. Pray, believe in God for a better week. Father, I believe you for a better week. Come and let's declare it and be decreed right now. Lord, I believe you for a better week the power of God which will cause you to have a, a week that is bearing fruit right now is released in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare and I decree to these ones who are at the sound of my voice right now, Father God, they will never be thrown away. They will never be downgraded in this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare and I decree that they shall be satisfied. There shall be no poverty in their body. There shall be no poverty in their soul, man. There shall be no poverty in their spirit, man, in the name of Jesus Christ. In this week, Father God, as we launch out, Father God, I I decree and I declare that the anointing of God that is upon our lives will give us favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ before God and men father we shall be favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father I declare and I decree that in this week my God as I command this morning and I command this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our labor shall shall, shall not be in vain in the name of Jesus Christ whatever we shall plant we shall eat in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every fruit that we have planted father God we will eat in the name of Jesus Christ father I decree and I declare to those who are in the sound of my voice on TikTok, on, on Facebook and on YouTube. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, they shall walk in this week in victory, Father God. Victory shall be every step that you take in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will walk in, a fa in faithfulness. The liberty of the Spirit of God will be the one that will cause you to, co to, to succeed. The liberty of, of the Spirit of the living God will cause you to overcome. The liberty of the living God will cause you to overtake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is making you a win you are a candidate for uncommon testimonies in this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, help us to receive our daily bread and we have good seed, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ and we will sow our seeds in season, oh God, and we will reap in season every money load that we will spend this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ shall bear fruit and it shall be an investment that will triple fold, that will sevenfold, that will hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for loading us daily with the benefits, oh God. We appropriate the benefits that you have given us in this mighty way, in this mighty week, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, in this week, I prophesy to everybody who's at the sound of my voice, right now, Lord, their lives shall advertise the glory of God. They shall be a billboard for the glory of the living God. Every testimony shall be an advertisement. You are a billboard walking into this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I cancel every disappointment, that of sorrow. I cancel the disappointment of tragedy over their lives in my life, oh God, in the lives of my family as well, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I cancel every evil will cry in this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by your mighty hand oh God the works of our hands shall be blessed and they shall glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare and I decree Lord that every single person who's at the sound of my voice will encounter and experience full scale laughter you will laugh this week the Lord is going to wipe your tears away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in every area of your endeavor the Lord will cause you to laugh in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you lay your hands on father god it will prosper in the mighty name of jesus christ father i declare concerning over lb abiella eva rude if rude boy everybody who's on this broadcast good though everybody who's on facebook and youtube right now whatever you lay your hands on in this week it shall prosper in the mighty name of jesus christ oh my god i wish i wish i had believers who could who could, who could type a resounding amen father as from this week onward any bloodthirsty demon, any bloodthirsty robber that will, will, will come into our presence, they will flee in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether we are on the sea, whether we are on the air, whether we are on the road, oh God. Let every evil force that is trying to make us bow to their authority, they will bow to our authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I come against the spirit of accidents. I come against the spirit of death in this week. None shall be buried in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who's connected with this ministry of God in this mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who's on this live broadcast who has been following us as well. I decree over your lives. You shall not contact death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who's on this broadcast in Jesus mighty name anything that you have waited for until now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ however long you have waited for it I decree and I declare that it shall be miraculously delivered to you in the name of Jesus Christ father make us and make our family members completely immune 
to any forms of sickness, to any forms of diseases in this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we put ourselves and our family members into the protective arms of the living God. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We declare and we decree that we are protected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you have unlocked a blessing of God. The true blessing, the blessing has been unlocked in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We will have unconquerable victory in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy shall not succeed. We have victory over the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, this week, like a clay in the hands of a potter, the Lord shall make what he wants out of our lives. Father, reshape us, remodel us. Whatever you need to do, do it, Lord. This week shall answer to you. This week shall answer to your wants. This, uh, this week shall answer to the causes that you have embarked on. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord shall be glorified through you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that in this week you will be the head and not the tail and not you will be above and not beneath. Father, every snare, every trap, every fowler that has been assigned, assigned against us in this week, against our careers in this week, Father, we declare and we decree that it shall not stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Every habitation of darkness, we render it useless in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every habitation of darkness that is against you, that is against your family, we command it to go into desolate places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command every evil deposit it shall not settle in your life. It shall not settle in your family's life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we enter into a covenant with you. In this week. Father, help us to find the resources that we need. Help us to find our brook of cherith. To everybody that is at the sound of my voice. I decree and I declare. Every mouth that is represented here. Your mouth is carrying your breakthrough right now. Favor is locating you right now. Breakthrough is locating you right now. The mouth of abundance shall open up for you. The mouth that you need to command right now, I want you to command abundance and say, I, I, I command abundance to come my way. I command the mouth of emotional and financial breakthrough to open up for me. I command the mouth of freedom to open up for me. The path of favor is opening up for me. The path of favor is my portion. Whatever little oil that I have will make way for me. Everything that I have left will not die. The Lord will resurrect that thing in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy to you that in this week, it shall be your week of supernatural opportunities. Your supernatural opportunities shall locate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This week, divine chances will locate you. Supernatural opportunities will find their way to you. Miracles will choose you this week. Even when you are not there, mercy will find you. When you are scared, you will not fail. Do it afraid. You will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, grace and power of the living God will fight for you. They will fight for your battles. I decree and declare that in this week, this week shall be a week of no regrets. Your joy will be full. I decree and I declare in this week, you will be satisfied. In these weeks, the, the, your dreams will not die. In this week, your goals will be met. Oh, guys, you are typing that amen too slow. Are you in agreement with me? It only works when we are in agreement. But for those two or three who are typing that resounding amen, so shall it be for you in Jesus' mighty name and it can never be otherwise. Every day of this week, I decree and I declare that it will smile for you. God bless you, Vuvu. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are not weak. You are strong in Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that you will see clearly in this week. You will not be confused. 
this week you shall not be stranded. This week you shall not be forgotten. This week God will separate you from every limiting circle of friendship. Any friends that have been limiting you, may you be separated. May God uproot you from them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not sit at the gate of life and wait to die. You will not sit by the side pool of Bethesda and not go in today in the stirring. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that you will see hope. Your hope is being revived in Jesus' mighty name. Your mouth will speak positive energy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your mouth will speak positive energy. It will release positive confessions, positive affirmations every single day of the week. No matter how hopeless it looks, receive the power to be positive. This week, things shall be easy for you. You will no longer live beyond expectation. God bless you, Matthews. You will live longer than it looks. You will thrive better than it looks. You will not fear your tomorrow, Facebook. You will not fear your tomorrow, YouTube. All that is supporting you will not fail. Your destiny helpers will not fail you in Jesus' mighty name. In this week, I decree and I declare that you are lifted. Your destiny is lifted. Receive that bounce, that, that, that thing that is propelling you forward. You are receiving a lifting. The Lord will lift up your hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, Mbaga. The Lord will save you. You will not be discouraged. You will not give up on your dreams. God is going to give you options. And it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. As I close, Father, I acknowledge you. You are the commander in chief. And I know that you can be trusted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall be trusted. My commander, you are trusted. Can somebody say it along with me as I close, please? And say, Commander God, I trust you. You are the commander, I trust you. When you trust God, you're going to step out and do what you need to do. Father, as your word came to Elijah and you commanded Elijah to move. Father, I trust you. We are moving to our brook of Cherith. And from our brook of Cherith, we are going to unlock those ones that need the plenty. Those that need to be a blessing in our lives. Father, as they continue to bless us, so shall they be blessed. So shall their, their gates be opened for increase. So shall their feet filled, be filled with wheat. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. After a while, after being at the brook of Cherith, the brook dried up. And the word of the Lord came again to Elijah and saying, Arise, it's now to go to Zarephath. You must have the grace to know when God is moving you from one place to the other. Some of you need to leave. Again, I repeat, your limitation is your current household. You need to leave that household. Be responsible. Those of you who are believing God for marital settlement, you must know that you're going to have to lend responsibility. Sometimes, it's not even the devil that is holding back your marital settlement. But God is saying, are you ready to be a wife? Are you ready to be a provider as a husband? Hallelujah. Arise and shine. Now go to your Zarephath. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to serve you. Lord, as I close, I thank you, Lord, that you are commanding us. And in your command, Lord, you have told us exactly what we need to see clearly. You have commanded us and shown us direction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we will move, Lord, nevertheless, at your word, regardless of what we are doubting, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We enter into this covenant with you. We enter into a covenant of favor this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare and we decree we are favored even beyond in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive the anointing of success and fruitfulness in this week. Father, in this new week, 
we are a candidate of only fruitfulness. Somebody declare it with me. I'm a candidate of fruitfulness. I see fruitfulness. I see fruitfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle has been removed from your way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if you need to jump off, it's okay. Just excuse yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, arise and scatter every evil pursuer in our lives in this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare and we decree that our destiny shall not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever program that you have set for us, O oh God, let us meet the right opportunities and unlock every single door. Father, we come against any Goliath that is trying to stand against us, O oh God. No giants will bring us down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Power will mean power and power must exchange hands. So every Goliath must come down in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, those that have mocked us, may they live to see the celebration that we are about to launch out into in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Lord, that for every power that has been assigned to cut short our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that power shall die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My prayers will be always answered, O God. Our prayers will provoke an angelic response in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that this is a for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father the fruits of our life for this week shall be released again in the name of Jesus Christ in this week I declare and I decree that you shall continually dwell in the secret place of the most high God and you will abide under the shadow of his wings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the angels of the Lord will take charge over you and they will keep you protected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father Send us the right words, O oh God. Guard our tongues. Help us to guard our tongues that we don't cancel everything that has been released that we have received today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, send us the right words. Every plan that you have shall come to pass. Any plans or devices of the enemy and the wicked shall not come to pass. They shall be disappointed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for answered prayer right now by your mighty hand. It is upon us in this week in Jesus mighty name somebody clap hands for Jesus and say it is my time to testify 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 ah commander in chief commander of the living forces of God no blemish shall be found in us thank you Lord it is my time to testify I want to say thank you Lord, for using me as a vessel. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me today. Thank you, Lord, that everything that has come out of my mouth, it was all you and none of me. Father, in whatever erroneous way I may have said anything of the flesh, Father, wipe it clean as snow. Father, thank you for these ones as I release them this morning to go to their respective workplaces or whether they're going home. Father, protection. The blood protects them. Father, you will answer and empower them. Let them activate, reactivate their brain cells, oh God. Bring them help that will rejuvenate them, oh God, to find the solutions. Father, as they go to meditate on your word, Father God, may they re receive revelations. Father, let this be a church that you will return to. The church that is without blemish. The church that will worship you in spirit and truth. The church that just doesn't want only the goodies, but they want the God of the goodies as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. God bless you. Facebook and YouTube, thank you so much. You can jump onto TikTok. Make sure you're following the account that you're following right now. If you're on YouTube, please make sure you click on the like button. You share those, those videos. I leave these replays there for you for a reason. So that you can go and soak yourself in it as much as possible. It's not the first time around that you get a message. You have to re-listen. And if you really want it to take root at least seven times, you can listen to the same message. Your life will never be the same again. That much I can tell.